and uh, now i think with respect to gratuity uh, so at least again 50% of gratuity is also part of code on social security so so same definition wage so again for gratuity also the uh, the the, uh, the uh, quantum of wage cannot go below uh, 50% of the remuneration so i think currently we are considering only basic and da right Uh, i think uh, like uh, pf I, i don't think uh, the authorities are demanding uh, a payment of uh, gratuity on other components uh, to that extent i think employees are uh, uh, a bit uh, safe that they, they can shell out uh, uh, maybe uh, not so much money uh, but still uh, as per this definition uh, again uh, there is a cap so so at least uh, uh, 50% is to be considered as wages uh, we cannot just limit it to basic and da alone so 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 gratuity is to be calculated at least on 50% of the remuneration but as i said as we discussed last week what is remuneration what is wage i think some clarity is required to determine that right that's a different story again but uh, the the term uh, employee specifically excludes only apprentices engaged in the i we discussed uh, uh, with respect to pf the same thing here also so so here also i think this uh, same definition will be applicable for gratuity so uh, the doubt arises whether then uh, the other apprentices apprentices engaged under the certified standing orders or uh, apprentices as per the uh, company's own policy will they be uh, treated now as employees for the purpose of gratuity that question will arise i think uh, we may require some clarity on this and uh, and uh, gratuity for fixed uh, fixed term workers yes fixed term workers now on one side yes uh, the, the the employers have been asking for uh, permitting them to engage uh, flexible employees right again uh, there are two forms one is by way of engaging contract workers right it is there i think that practice is there but but that class of workers they are all clearly governed by a specific legislation called contract labor regulation abolition act so subject to the provisions of that act yes the employers can engage contract workers in their establishments right that is the situation but but fixed term employees it was not permitted right it was there for a short time between 2003 and 2007 it was permitted under the central model standing orders itself in fact it was allowed but in 2017 i think that was withdrawn right but but one or two states continue to have that uh, option it is still there also in those uh, states now i think this is again coming up clearly uh, the term fixed term uh, employee is defined in more than one code and which almost indirectly gives the employers to go for uh, 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 engagement of fixed term employees but only thing is yes they will they are to be treated on par with the permanent employees and they will be entitled for all benefits available to Uh, permanent employees and uh, that that needs to be worked out on a prorata basis and it is to be paid to them including gratuity and uh, in case of working journalists the qualifying service for payment of gratuity is 3 years it is not 5 uh, uh, years uh, so so if a working journalist if he completes 3 uh, years of continuous service then that person will become eligible for payment of gratuity then uh, coming to maternity benefits again same thing uh, now i think uh, for calculating maternity benefits we'll consider the monthly gross wage so now it is not required at least 50% right so if in your structure salary structure if we have the excluded components up to 50% then the rest of 50% will be considered as wages so you may have to calculate maternity benefits on the rest 50% then you may have to pay to the employee who is a woman employee who is claiming that and uh, and the crash is to be provided if there are 50 or more employees there was a confusion suppose if if an establishment is uh, uh, registered under esi whether uh, the employer uh, uh, should provide crash under maternity because uh, those establishments which are covered under esi are absolved of the liabilities under maternity benefits act and uh, uh, wc act right that is the situation uh, but but now i think that clarity is coming through even though it is covered under esi i think if there are 50 or more employees the code very clearly says crash is to be provided by the uh, employers and the maternity benefits or medical bonus currently i think it is 3500 uh, in case if uh, prenatal and uh, postnatal treatments are not uh, extended by the employer uh, medical bonus is to be paid uh, so 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 uh, of course the maternity benefits and the medical both can be denied if the woman employee is uh, involved in some gross misconduct of course what is that misconduct all those things uh, uh, to be prescribed by the central government uh, but there is a provision right 
so in case they are involved in uh, committing that uh, gross misconduct they need not be paid uh, the maternity benefits or the uh, medical bonus uh, prescribed under maternity benefit and again under uh, employees compensation at least 50% again here also uh, uh, the, the monthly gross will be treated as wages for the purpose of uh, uh, employees compensation act the erstwhile workman compensation act uh, but but uh, uh, now i think uh, Fifty uh, percent. If the 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 total uh, sum of uh, the export components comes to fifty percent, then I think rest fifty percent allow will be treated as wages. But of course, there is a ceiling for calculation, right? Currently, it is fifteen thousand, right? It was four thousand. It was eighty eight thousand. Then I think now it has uh, uh, raised to uh, fifteen thousand uh, from uh, January twenty twenty. And uh, presumption as to the accident, well, commutation between residents and place of employment, similar to ESI, right? Here also. Yes, it will be treated as employment injury, uh, and and compensation is to be paid by the employer. If, if the uh, person uh, who met with the accident, uh, who sustained injury, uh, falls under the definition of the term employee, then that is to be done by the employer. Compensation. Then uh, chapter seven, employees' compensation, appropriate government. So currently, uh, interestingly, the term appropriate government is not uh, uh, defined under uh, the Employees' Compensation Act, but the central rules are there. Right, state rules are also there. Uh, so, so there is a confusion as to who will be the uh, enforcing authority, whether it will be the state authority or the central authority. But I think uh, since uh, the term uh, appropriate government is now defined and it is common for all uh, the, the uh, nine areas, including the employees' compensation under the code on uh, social security, now I think uh, that uh, issue will now get settled. 